Okay, friends, now let's look at underactive and non-muscle pelvic floor self-check summary. Well, self-check, we're gonna go over an example here. So this is not the summary, I shouldn't have said that. Okay, so basically this person, uh, she had a vaginal delivery. She's had multiple vaginal deliveries and one of her vaginal deliveries, the first baby tore from the vaginal opening all the way to the anus. And that first baby also um, broke her tailbone, okay? So that's her history. And this is what it looks like or what it could look like. Okay, so all of these look normal. Uh, within WNL means within normal limits. Then we have the labia minora, dry, uh, no pain there though. You don't insert anything. There's no scar tissue or restricted movement, and the sensation that to touch feels feels normal. Now the opening of the vagina is dry, no pain, no pain. Um, it is gaping though. So when you look at a vaginal canal, um, there are some that actually kind of have like a gaping. So instead of being like small kind of closed opening, it's more of like a gaping opening. And, you know, that's understandable. The vaginal canal has to stretch, right? Uh, the pelvic floor muscles stretch up to almost four times their resting length and the non-muscular structures also stretch. And the vaginal canal is a very stretchy structure, um, but sometimes there is laxity. So that's what that gaping is talking about. So there's gaping. No scar tissue there at the opening of the vagina or restricted movement, but when touching around that area, it's high post sensitive. So it feels kind of numb. She wasn't, she thought you were kind of touching or, or rather this is a self-assessment. So she's kind of touching, but it doesn't feel normal like it does on her other areas of the uh, perineum that she was touching. Then the vaginal canal, dry, light pressure, no pain, no pain to deep pressure, laxity. So when she inserts her thumb into that vaginal canal, there's a lot of motion. She can even easily insert two, three, or even four fingers into that vaginal canal. So there's a lot of movement and laxity there in the vaginal canal. And none of that is painful. The perineal body. Now she does have a scar on the perineal body. No pain with light pressure, but pain with deep pressure. You don't insert anything there. Uh, there is scar tissue. There is some restricted movement and touching that perineal body, which is this, this is the perineal body, touching that, that is restricted. It's not moving as well because of that scar tissue. And then we have the external anus. So remember that scar went all the way to the anus. So it went from the vaginal, we call it the posterior fourchette there of the vaginal canal. It went all the way back to the anus. So that would be at least a grade three uh, is what she had. And so uh, she has no pain with light pressure, pain with deep pressure. There's actually pain there, uh, I'm sorry, laxity with, she did try to do some insertion there in uh, the external anus and, the, and it was kind of loose. Like it was, it was pretty easy to insert a finger. There was very little muscle tone there. And then uh, there was scar tissue and also restricted movement and it was hypersensitive. And then everything else looked good here except the coccyx. So that's that tailbone. She wasn't really sure. You know, this is a self-assessment. It's really hard to find that tailbone, but she thought that when she was touching it, instead of kind of having a nice curve inward, hers felt like it kind of hooked in like that. So that's what she found on her self-assessment for underactive um, pelvic floor muscles uh, or pelvic floor. And so now we're going to go to the muscle check.